Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a polynomial expression. We have x minus 3 times the square root of x is equal to 2, and we're supposed to evaluate x squared minus 13x. In this case, I think x is supposed to be real. So, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following. Since we were given an equation, why not solve it, right? So if life gives you an equation, solve it. <laughs> okay, so there is a couple different ways to solve this equation. For example, you can isolate the radical, square both sides, and then check your work because you might be getting extraneous solutions. Or you can use substitution, which is a little kind of safer, and set square root of x equal to something like t. If you do that, you get x equals t squared, and you do impose the requirement that square root of x is greater than or equal to zero. Obviously, in this case, x or t cannot be zero because that's not going to satisfy the equation. So we can safe say that square root of x or t must be positive. Okay, so let's go ahead and see under those conditions what we can do. Replace uh, x with t squared and this with t. So now you do get a quadratic equation, even though it kind of looks factorable first, it did look factorable to me, and then I realized, no, the solutions are not rational. Anyways, that's okay. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for irrational solutions, and then we'll explore a little further. So to solve this equation, you can use completing the square, but that's not recommended. Let's use the old, good old quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared plus minus 4ac, but that's just going to give you an 8 divided by 2. So t would be from here, 3 plus minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. Now, let's go ahead and write these values separately. t sub 1, 3 plus root 17 over 2, and t sub 2, 3 minus root 17 over 2. Now, it's important to write these separately so you can see clearly what they look like. Square root of 17 is greater than the square root of 16, which is 4. So this is greater than 4, and if you subtract it from 3, you'll, you'll get a negative answer. And t cannot be negative. No, no, right? You do know that, hopefully, remember? So t is supposed to be positive, therefore, we're going to reject the second solution. If you just solved it by squaring both sides, you would get an extraneous solution, and you would still reject it, because you would have to check. But it would be a little harder because you would have to square root a radical expression. Alrighty. So now this is my acceptable good t value. And t is equal to what? Square root of x, right? So I'm going to set this equal to square root of x and solve for x from there. Solving for x is fairly easy. All you have to do is square both sides. Let's do it. Square this and square that. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the following, square this, you get x. Now, if you square the numerator, you're going to get a plus b squared, so it's going to be like 9 plus 17 plus 6 root 17 from 2ab divided by 4. This is 26, and then if you go ahead and divide everything by 2, you'll get the x value, which is 13 plus 3 root 17 over 4. I mean 2, because we divided by 2, I forgot to do the denominator. And that's going to be the answer for x. So we got the x value, the only one that works. And we're supposed to evaluate what x squared minus 13x. So we do need x squared. We're going to square this one more time. And when you square 13 plus 3 root 17, you're going to get, and when you square the 2, you're going to get 4. But you're going to get the a plus b squared again. So it's going to be 169 plus 9 times 17 which is 153, I think, plus 13 times 3 times 2, which is 78 root 17 divided by 4. If you add these two, you're going to get 322. Half of that would be 161, plus half of 78 is 39, and then we're dividing everything by 2 again to get the simplest form. So this is x squared, and that was x. So what do you do with that? Put it together. What are we trying to evaluate? If you remember, the problem was asking for x squared minus 13x, right? So let's go ahead and plug it in. x squared is 161 plus 39 root 17 over 2 minus 13 times 
this number, what was x? 13 plus 3 root 17 divided by 2. So we have a common denominator. We can just go ahead and combine the numerators. 161 plus 39 root 17 minus 39 and then minus, uh, actually not 39, that's uh, 169, 13 times 13, 169. And then with the minus sign, because negative times positive, is going to be 39 root 17 all over 2. And here, magic or mathematic happens. 39 root 17 cancels out. 161 minus 169 is equal to negative 8. Divided by 2 becomes negative 4. So the answer is negative 4 as you can see here. So we were expecting to get a numerical value, of course, because we found the x value, plugged it in. But is that value unique? Yes. There's only one x value for which x is real, and then it gives us negative 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and hopefully uh, the second method will make more sense. And let me know which one do you think is better, Okay, because everybody is different. So x minus 3 root x is equal to 2, and I'm supposed to evaluate x squared minus 13x. Okay, what are we going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. Manipulation. So let's go ahead and switch these around. Subtract 2 and add 3 root x. And then divide both sides by root x because that's going to do a lot of great things. You'll see in a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and split this up. x divided by square root of x is square root of x and minus 2 over square root of x. So this is how this problem came about. Did I tell you this is a homemade problem, but these problems are easy to make once you get the main idea, and this is the main idea. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find x squared minus 13x, but how do I get there? Easy, but just by squaring both sides. So we're given this equation, obviously, and it's true for a single value of x, which is real, but let's go and square both sides and see what happens. When you square this, you're going to get x plus 4 over x, I do the a squared plus b squared first, minus 2ab is going to give me uh, 2 times 2, which is 4, and this is 9. If you add 4 to both sides, you're going to get x plus 4 over x is equal to 13, and multiply everything by x, you're going to get x squared plus 4 equals 13x, and then remember what we were looking for, x squared minus 13x. Uh-oh, isn't that great? It just came up, right? Well, bring the 13x here and put the 4 on the right-hand side, and you'll get the answer. So this is how this problem was made. Hopefully this also gives you an idea on how to make problems. And of course, you can start with something like this, like x minus 2 over root x, set equal to a number, square both sides, isolate the x squared, and then that's what you're asking for, right? Obviously, you can ask for lots of different things, but you don't have to use a 2, you don't have to use a square root of x, you could also use the fourth root of x, or you could just use 5, uh, you know, 3, 7, whatever number you want, and then you'll just get a different problem. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.